everybody. Um, I'm Brian Perry. This is uh, Drupal State and the need for a JavaScript SDK. Uh, really great to be here with actual people. What is, what is this? I, uh, I wasn't able to attend the camp last year. What, what did I miss? <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm Brian. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm a senior software engineer at Pantheon. I am also one of the initiative coordinators for Drupal's Decoupled Menus initiative. Um, I live in the Chicago suburbs. I like Drupal, JavaScript, and Nintendo. Um, and recently bought a Ms. Pac-Man machine, which I'm kind of proud, proud about. Uh, and am on the internet in a bunch of different places and, uh, you know, connect and stuff. Uh, the other thing I'll say is um, I'm not going to use the mic. If anybody has trouble hearing me, let me know. I can, but I I'm going to assume that I'm loud enough. Um, usually don't have a problem with that. Uh, also, uh, as I mentioned, I work for Pantheon, um, and definitely want to thank uh, Pantheon for sending me out here. And also, uh, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about today, and you know, some things in the future related to uh, decoupled Drupal, um, are things that uh, open source things that Pantheon has sponsored uh, my work for. So, you know, really appreciate them giving me the opportunity to do that. So, uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Partially, anyway, is uh, a library called uh, Drupal State um, that is a, a general project on Drupal.org. Um, so it's a simple data store for managing application state sourced from Drupal and Drupal's JSON API. We'll talk about uh, why it was created, why somebody might use it, and, and why I think that library or something like it is important for the future of Drupal. Um, but... This also is going to be kind of a winding journey through uh, Drupal's JavaScript ecosystem, um, or specifically like the decoupled Drupal ecosystem in some ways. So uh, buckle up. So um, yeah, we'll look at some code examples along the way. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is a uh, menu web component. This was uh, built uh, as part of uh, the decoupled menus initiative. So this is just a uh, web component uh, that sources data from Drupal here. So um, I have a JavaScript file that just imports the component. And then really everything here is just markup in my HTML file. So we see we have the uh, GDWC, which stands for Generic Drupal Web Components uh, Menu Element. And then we're passing in some information to it. Uh, the Branding, uh, a base URL for the uh, endpoint, uh, uh, Drupal endpoint that we're talking to, menu ID, some theming, so you know we can do things here like uh, remove the theme, and then it's not styled in any way, or we could change to the account menu, Oops. and then I guess I didn't show up before, but. Um, when we expand the menu, we see just login because we're not authenticated. But if we go back to main here, we have that. So, uh, you know, this is a component that is uh, specifically built so that it can easily source data from uh, Drupal's JSON API, uh, and in this case, the the decoupled menus endpoint. Um, you know, with little config, you can do it without bundling all that good stuff. So as a, a proof of concept, you know, this was uh, a, an interesting approach, creating a web component. And I started to look at, you know, how could we build other web components that could easily source data from Drupal or even just be used uh, within Twig as well. Um, so that caused me to look a little bit more at how the this component actually sor sources its data. So. In the web component, there's a uh, lifecycle method called connected callback. So essentially, when the web component is actually loaded, this will trigger uh, a fetch. So it uses just pretty traditional JavaScript uh, fetch here. And uh, that fetch data method, we pass in that URL that we get and the menu ID. Um, and this is the code that actually fetches that data from that menu endpoint. Um, you know, the specifics of it don't really matter a ton, but, um, but you know, the, the issue here is that within this component, 
it actually is making a call out to that endpoint, getting the data, et cetera. So that's really great in this one particular example of a menu. But if, you know, when I started looking at, okay, how could we build a card component or other components within this library, that approach doesn't scale. So if we have a card, you know, you got one card, it's gonna make one API request. If you have 10 cards, it's gonna make 10. Uh, and you could easily get into uh, the, the world where you're uh, DDoSing yourself. So at that point, you know, the question that I, I started thinking about is, you know, how could a component library like this um, have, you know, state and utilities that it could use to get data out of Drupal easily? Um, so, it, yeah, so this is what uh, the, I, I felt like the component library needed. Um, easy ways to get data from Drupal's core JSON API endpoints and some sort of solution to be able to manage state across the different components in this library. And, you know, that feels like something that would be a solved problem. You know, there's uh, definitely a lot of uh, decoupled Drupal projects that are being built these days. Um, but it, it wasn't something that appeared to be a clearly solved problem to me. I looked at how other projects uh, within the decoupled Drupal ecosystem handled it. And, um, you know, we can look at some of the, the details here, but really the, the biggest thing that I found is that a lot of decoupled Drupal projects or decoupled Drupal utilities have to solve this problem, but many of them do it in, you know, slightly different ways. So uh, there's the uh, Druxt project, and that has a custom JSON API client, and it uses uh, a Vue, Vuex store. So there's stuff that is specific to Vue within that project um, and how it manages data. Next for Drupal has uh, a set of individual helper functions, and it doesn't really, uh, at least from what I can tell, have built-in opinions about managing uh, the state. Um, you know, which gives you flexibility to do whatever you want, uh, but again, there isn't really a, a baked-in answer for that. There are a handful of other SDK-like libraries in NPM uh, for Drupal. There's a Drupal SDK, a Drupal JS SDK, some other ones. Um, you know, part of the problem there is there really doesn't, it does, it's not clear if there is like, you know, an official Drupal one, there isn't, <laughs> or kind of what uh, the common standard is, but also those libraries are all a little bit different, all approach this problem in slightly different ways. And, um, you know, in working on decoupled projects or, you know, being familiar with other decoupled Drupal projects, it's pretty common that uh, you'll just roll your own to solve this problem. You'll pick a state management library, you, uh, you know, might write your, your own utilities to fetch data from Drupal's JSON API endpoints. Um, so uh, there didn't appear to be a, a clear solution to this common problem. Isn't that always the case? Um, so, uh, you know, that led me to start wondering what could we do and what could Drupal do so that this isn't a problem that people have to solve over and over. And from my perspective, you know, what we would need to be able to make progress there is something that is framework agnostic. So rather than building something that's specific to Vue or specific to React, um, you know, something that could uh, work with any framework or no framework at all, or the JavaScript framework that's going to be cool two years from now that doesn't even exist yet. Um, and then also uh, having individual utilities uh, within this that you can kind of pick and choose from. Um, and then also, you know, uh, having some sort of solution for state management, um, that is important for the, the problem that I was trying to solve here. I think that would be useful for people who are, uh, you know, sourcing data from Drupal. But also I understand that there are going to be cases where people have other opinions about how to manage state in their JavaScript application. So, um, it should, at it should be possible to use an alternative as well, in my opinion. Anyway. And then that, you know, got me thinking uh, also just about uh, JSON API in general and uh, sourcing data from JSON API. And then also thinking about that from the perspective of 
JavaScript developers, especially JavaScript developers who might not be familiar with Drupal or might not be familiar with the JSON API spec. So um, the, the JSON API implementation that is in core is really awesome, but I think it requires some amount of knowledge of Drupal, certain Drupal things, and also that, that spec that uh, not everyone is familiar with. So let's look at a, a few examples just to kind of dig in on that, like uh, what it actually takes to get data from uh, JSON API endpoints. So here, um, there's just uh, some sample code that fetches uh, recipes, I believe, and the results in uh, uh, JSON on the right-hand side. But just kind of walking through it, so we have to fetch from, so this is assuming uh, that, you know, this is kind of the case where you may not know uh, all the specifics of this API or uh, Drupal's conventions around it. So at the root of uh, JSON API, there's essentially like an index of all of the different endpoints. So you might know what that endpoint is and you could just fetch it. But if you don't, you would have to get that index, which is what we're doing in this first step which can tell you what the endpoint for recipes are. Down here. And then at that point, we fetch the uh, recipes endpoint that we got from that index of links. Mood lighting, I love it. And then, so at that point, we have, uh, from that fetch, we have the data that comes back. And then um, that data still is, um, you know, the shape of that data is not completely flat. There are still some kind of, uh, you know, Drupal specific things like there are certain fields that are going to be under the attributes object and other fields that are not. Um, and then especially when you get into things like relationships, um, the uh, what fields are relationships and, and what fields are not relationships, you have to have uh, a decent understanding of the content model or content type in Drupal to be able to work through that. Um, so if, for example, we wanted to get uh, the instructions for one recipe, it's, you know, the recipes we got back, data, uh, the zero in the array, dot attributes, dot instructions. Um, and then if we wanted to get instead, rather than all recipes and individual recipes, you know, we, we would have to have the ID here and add that ID to the endpoint uh, when we fetch it. Um, and then here we're getting into, doo -doo -doo. yeah, so that's the situation. So th in this example, we got all recipes and then you know if we wanted to get an individual recipe. Um, so because that was in the first request, if we did store that information in our application state, we wouldn't have to make another request to the API. Um, so to be able to avoid that the you know, second request that we have here, we would have to store it somewhere within our application state. All right, let's look at a, a few other things. So uh, the recipe here has a category uh, associated with it, uh, taxonomy term, I believe. And uh, in this case, the uh, category is snack. So for this individual recipe, if we wanted to get the category for it, for JSON API, we would have to add this include parameter. So in, include equals category to get that uh, category relationship for the recipe. And then when we get that back, there is the relationships in the result here. And then the included data. And theoretically, there could be more than one category so um, we have to filter through that list to be able to get the right category. Um, and then at that point, we can go here and access the attribute.name on the category. So it's a little, little bit of a walk there. And again, you, know, you have to know a little bit about the structure that you're getting back here. Um, you can get all this data. But uh, again, I just think there are certain things that you have to know about JSON API to be able to do that. And then uh, another common problem that I've seen uh, of people using JSON API is just uh, overfetching. 
and getting more data back uh, in the response than you actually need. Imagine uh, you're just looking to render like a teaser and you only need a few fields. Um, if you just hit the endpoint for recipes, you're going to get all of the data uh, associated with uh, that recipe. So if we just wanted a few fields here, title, difficulty, instructions, and the name category, we have to add a handful of parameters to the JSON API request. So if we do include equals category, which we saw before, that's going to give us all of the fields on the category as well in the response, even though we only want one. So we can, uh, all, we can specify here with this fields query parameter, fields recipes. So on the uh, recipe content type, we can get just the title, difficulty, and instructions, and category field. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned there, that category is going to give us all of the fields back. So then if we wanted just the name on the category, we would have to add uh, fields categories equals name. So again, all of the functionality is there so that you can get a response back with just the data that you want. Um, but you know you have to know these conventions and you have to uh, you know, set the query uh, as needed to get just that data. So what I, I see in a lot of projects is people not doing this when they could and reduce their payloads. <coughs> um, and, and still, even when we do try to strip things down just to the data that we want, um, so this is the kind of end result of that uh, URL and our fetch request, the response that we get back is still pretty noisy. It's not, you know, just the fields that we asked for. Um, some things are under attributes. There's the relationships it, and all that. And again, if you're familiar with JSON API, um, you'll get used to this pretty quickly. But if you're not, um, you know, it might not be what you're expecting when you say, give me these four fields. And then also there is, uh, you know, specifically thinking about the uh, concept of, you know, trying to define the shape of what you get back in your response and just getting the data that you want. Um, we should probably talk a little bit about GraphQL. GraphQL is, is really good at solving that problem in that, you know, you define within your GraphQL query just the, you know, the fields that you want, the shape of what you want in your response. Um, so it leads you to uh, those smaller payloads. And uh, within Drupal and the, the Drupal ecosystem, GraphQL is not in core. Um, there is a, uh, a great contributed module for GraphQL, um, and I'm not uh, heavily involved with the, the GraphQL module, but my, my understanding of where the GraphQL module is today, it, it's in kind of a unique spot where the version, th there, there's a pretty big difference between the version 3 and version 4 version of the GraphQL module. Version 3 will automatically try to derive a GraphQL schema from the data in your Drupal site, kind of like what JSON API does. You just turn it on and you have an endpoint that you can hit that gives you access to any of your Drupal stuff. But again, that comes with a, you know, some Drupalisms and Drupal structure. And then version 4, as I understand it, doesn't uh, provide a, a schema out of the box automatically. So it requires uh, custom code to be able to create your schema, which is good in that you can really uh, define your API in the way that you need it, um, and you, can, you, know, you don't necessarily have to navigate those Drupalisms, but it requires custom code. If you just install version 4 out of the box, uh, there aren't going to be uh, endpoints for you to hit. <laughs> um, so that is kind of a, a little bit of a, uh, a tricky spot for that module, um, further complicating uh, the world of GraphQL in Drupal at the moment. So uh, going back to uh, the Drupal State Library that, that we talked about, um, so it w is an attempt to try to solve some of these problems. It's uh, framework agnostic. It's just uh, vanilla JavaScript. It is uh, universal, so you can run it on the server and the client. And uh, it has uh, 
some light built-in state management. So if you make a request to a, a JSON API endpoint, it will store that in local state, and any future requests that would require that get it from local state first, and then if not, it will uh, hit the JSON API endpoint. It also uh, represents the data in a simplified deserialized structure. Um, and then uh, it also makes available individual utility functions. So all of the things that are used uh, you know, to fetch data and structure it and everything like that can also be uh, used individually as well. So for example, if you wanted to do some of the things this library does, but you don't want, uh, or you want a different state management solution, you can use those utilities. So let's uh, look at a few examples of what that actually ends up looking like. So uh, here we import uh, Drupal state, and uh, you know it's an npm package, and then we create an instance of uh, Drupal state that is our store. So we provide uh, the uh, base uh, for the API, and then a prefix for it. Um, that's JSON API by default, so you can just leave that off. Um, but if you have a different uh, prefix, you can set it. Um, and then here. We uh, just have uh, to get all of the recipes from the API. We can just say store.getObject and provide the name of the objects, which in this case is recipes. For uh, the default JSON API, it would be no dash dash uh, recipe, I, I believe. So uh, just that one line is going to give us back uh, all of our recipes. And as you can see here, the uh, the shape of what we get back is flattened. So um, the individual fields are at the top level, um, including, as we'll see uh, in a second, relationships. So um, the hope here is that this is a, a little friendlier to somebody who is uh, either not familiar to Drup with Drupal or uh, specifically our JSON API implementation. And then also, uh, you know, if you want to get a particular uh, uh, recipe and have the ID, you can provide that as well to get just that one individual entity. Okay, so this uh, next example is uh, an example of uh, getting um, a, a relationship, so also including the category in the response. Um, and we saw before that there are a handful of query string parameters that you can add. Um, and actually, one thing that was noted on that slide that I forgot to mention, uh, there is a, a great utility uh, in the community, uh, I think it's Drupal JSON a API params, that um, makes it easy to manage those query string parameters for JSON API. So that actually is a dependency of Drupal state here, which allows us to, if we want the category, we can say uh, params.addInclude and add the category. And then the request, when we get our recipe, will have that query string parameter, so we get the category back. And the uh, response here, again, is deserialized and flattened. So if we actually want to get the recipe category, it's just uh, recipe.category.name. And we don't have to go dive through the relationships and, and all of that. And then, um, so uh, this is another uh, utility here. So the, also, um, as we're building out this library, we're looking to uh, provide things that will help with some of the, uh, the common uh, contrib modules that are used with JSON API. Uh, so uh, this is something that uses decoupled router. So if you have decoupled router enabled, you can use this get object by path um, method here. So rather than providing an ID for a particular recipe, you can uh, pass the object name and then the path uh, that you want to resolve the entity for. So we have recipes fiery chili sauce, um, and that is going to give us that particular recipe, as we see on, on the right-hand side. And then um, also I talked about the utilities themselves. So this is an example uh, of that. Um, to get that data, there is a translate path uh, function. 
and uh, that is exported uh, by the Drupal State Library as well. So if you just wanted something to help you um, uh, get responses from decoupled router, you could use this translate path utility, as we see here, and you pass in uh, the, the API base, essentially, and then the uh, path that you want to translate. And then you get back what decoupled router provides, as you see on the right-hand side here. And then this is actually the code for that little utility. Uh, it's definitely not that complicated. It, it just adds a couple of necessary parameters. Um, it's also possible to provide your own fetch compatible library if you don't want to use uh, default JavaScript fetch and would prefer to use something else. Um, but so, you know, not super complicated code here, but uh, this is a problem that it seems like a handful of people using JSON API utilities with Drupal would need to do. So uh, wouldn't it be great if there was just a, you know, exportable utility that people could take advantage of? And then uh, this uh, is definitely uh, kind of in the area of uh, an experimental feature. Um, but, you know, we talked a little bit about um, GraphQL and JSON API and how all that comes together in the Drupal ecosystem. Um, so uh, an additional feature of, of Drupal State is that you can actually provide uh, simple GraphQL queries to describe uh, the fields that you want and the structure of the data that you want back. Uh, it uses uh, Apollo uh, a client and Apollo link, which basically allows you to have a, a translation layer in the middle uh, between uh, the client and the API, which uh, there's a, a library out there that somehow magically converts JSON API into GraphQL. <laughs> um, so that allows us to have this uh, query option. So, you know, there's the example that we saw before where we only wanted four fields. So what we can do here is provide within the, the template literal here uh, a query that just title, difficulty, instructions, and then category name. And we get that nice deserialized response with just the stuff that we asked for, as we see on the right-hand side, which is, uh, I, you know, uh, some people uh, care about the cleanliness of what they get back, others uh, not as much, but that, that just looks beautiful to me. Um, and then the other thing that it is doing behind the scenes uh, that is nice, again, kind of taking advantage of what uh, Core's JSON API offers, because it knows, uh, because you're defining the query and you're telling, uh, you know, Drupal State in this case, what fields you want, it is automatically behind the scenes adding those parameters to your API requests so that it, you know, the JSON API response is also very small as well. It's just getting those fields like we saw before, but you don't actually have to go through the effort of adding all the individual things to the, the query string. And then kind of going back to, uh, you know, where this all started, because, uh, you know, this library was created trying to solve that problem with a web component library, like how could we uh, share state and easily get uh, data out of Drupal. Um, if that becomes a solved problem and if these utilities exist, uh, the hope there is that this will allow, uh, you know, even starting with this web components project, but hopefully others, to focus on the things that potentially make their decoupled Drupal project or their Drupal JavaScript utility unique. So uh, still uh, also kind of in the experimental category and, and working through this, but now that uh, the functionality of Drupal State exists, I was able to go back to this generic Drupal web components project and start to experiment with, you know, how could we make this state uh, utility available to a set of web components. So looking at the code here, uh, these are the all web components, but there's essentially a, a client component um, that takes a lot of the same arguments that we saw when using the Drupal state library in, in our JavaScript examples. And then there is a query component where you can specify what object you want to get data for, um, any of the additional uh, parameters that you need to specify, like if you're including data, and then uh, also the ability to provide a query to specify the shape of the response that you get back. And 
so this example is with a card component, uh, you know, as, as we talked about before. And if we look at the card here in Storybook, um, so this is the web component without using uh, any of the clients or query state management stuff. So this is just the card that just has, you know, pretty unstyled image, headline, body, link, etc. So just those, uh, you know, essentially four fields. But if we go back to the query there, um, GraphQL has the ability to uh, alias uh, fields in your query pretty easily. So the cool thing that that, uh, that allows you to do here is you can alias the fields in your query so that they match the fields in your component, which will just automatically make that data available to your component without having to do fancy mapping. So you'll see things like uh, image source URL here or link href alias. That's doing the mapping to the fields in that component. And then inside the client and query, um, anything with that uh, GDWC uh, uh, namespace there will have access to the uh, state, the application state there. So they can get, uh, you can have an ID for these cards and that is just going to get, uh, use the data for that particular recipe when rendering the card. Um, so, you know, still working this out, but I, I think uh, it opens up some interesting possibilities with this web component library. If there is just a generic way that we can uh, source data from Drupal and then any uh, children within that, you know, uh, client component can access the data, it starts to, yeah, open up some really cool possibilities of, of how these components can easily work with uh, data from Drupal. And this is uh, the example in Storybook here. So this is uh, the card where we're just passing data uh, uh, manually into it. But this is an example uh, with data. It takes a second to load it, but um, this is uh, just using the uh, data that comes back from JSON API. Let's see how we're doing on time. Okay, we got got some time still. Um, all right, so that, that was kind of the ride from, uh, you know, building that menu web component and then figuring out and getting kind of stuck with, well, how could uh, these components share uh, data from Drupal? Um, so I feel like, you know, made some good progress in solving that problem, but it's also kind of presented a, a number of other questions. So where could we possibly go uh, from this point? And... Um, First, I want to do just a, a very unscientific survey of how Drupal stands in the wider uh, JavaScript ecosystem by just searching on NPM a bunch of times. Um, but if you search uh, Drupal on NPM, this is what you get. Um, there, it's, uh, it's a little confusing, the results that you get back. There's a, the first thing is a implementation of parts of Drupal's user and access control API. Uh, Drupal's hashing algorithm, React Drupal Core, you know, they're, they're also down at the bottom is one of those Drupal SDK libraries eventually. Um, but, you know, just searching for Drupal on NPM, it's a little bit confusing, like, if any of these things are uh, actually part of Drupal, what they do, you know, if there are uh, common approaches to um, using JavaScript with Drupal. If you know to um, search for the Drupal namespace, um, you get these two libraries. Um, the, there have been uh, changes uh, even with part of the um, uh, decoupled menus initiative starting to split out um, JavaScript utilities in Drupal under the Drupal namespace and NPM. So these are, are utilities that Drupal core uses that are available on NPM but right now, it's just two very specific utilities, uh, an implementation of once and an accessible autocomplete uh, module that's being worked on. So what does it uh, look like when we search for some other CMS-related things? Uh, if we search for WordPress, this looks a little uh, clearer and more intentional that there are utilities that are for uh, Work, you know, the first one is a client for working with WordPress, 
And then there are things under the WordPress namespace. Um, WordPress does have uh, more uh, JavaScript that's kind of part of WordPress core with the, uh, the Gutenberg editor being built in React. So I'd imagine that's what uh, some of these utilities are. Um, but they can also be used uh, outside of WordPress core itself. And then uh, some other CMSs, even outside of open source. If we uh, search for uh, AEM, um, it's maybe not as clear what the uh, sets of utilities are here, but there are still a handful of AEM-related things under the Adobe namespace. Um, Happen to... Uh, learn a little bit more about uh, Sitecore and uh, their JavaScript SDKs and utilities, but Sitecore has kind of a clear set of um, things under utilities under the Sitecore namespace intended to source data from Sitecore. And then, uh, you know, this in a way really isn't a fair comparison, but for like a headless CMS like Contentful, um, because, you know, that is JavaScript, Obviously, it's a lot clearer when you search for Contentful what the JavaScript utilities for Contentful are um, because, you know, that's what it does. But, you know, in summary, uh, there, you know, I feel like if somebody searches Drupal on NPM, which I think is something that a JavaScript developer would do, um, there's not as clear a story as to what's going on. <coughs> so, uh, you know, and I'm definitely, this is the uh, thinking out loud uh, portion of the presentation, but, um, you know, how could we improve that, uh, you know, Drupal as a project, Drupal as a community? Um, so, I, you know, I do think that having more tools under the actual Drupal namespace uh, would be very useful and, and important, and I think it would uh, improve our standing within the JavaScript ecosystem. Um, this is kind of, the next one is kind of related to um, some of the efforts of the, the, uh, the decoupled menus initiative, but as far as there being documentation on, the, the documentation for the JSON API module itself is great, but there is not a lot of documentation on how to use that in a JavaScript application or how to uh, build decoupled Drupal projects or, you know, in anything really around uh, JavaScript that is consuming data from Drupal. And then also, uh, you know, related to this, uh, and obviously I am uh, opinionated and I've worked on a, a library kind of in this neighborhood, but I, I do think that there should be, and it would be useful uh, to developers and would also, again, improve our standing in the JavaScript ecosystem. I do feel that there should be some sort of actual Drupal SDK. And you know, I'm working on a utility in, in that, that area, but the, in my opinion, the most important thing is that there is something that is kind of the, the go-to approach for this. Um, and, you know, it's important that there's something It's less important as to what exactly serves that purpose. But I think it would be uh, really helpful if something like that existed. <coughs> and then uh, thinking about that a, a little bit, uh, Again, just thinking from the perspective of within the, the Drupal-related JavaScript ecosystem, I feel like there are a lot of problems being solved over and over in slightly different ways. Uh, you know, looking way down the line, I think there are some ways that we could uh, share more of these utilities, again, so that people can focus on the things that are specific to their particular, you know, decoupled project. Um, so if there was, you know, a SDK or utility that uh, was Drupal's kind of standard or default way to source data from Drupal, um, there could obviously be uh, utilities that depend on that. And this assumes that the, uh, you know, that utility that sources data is not framework specific. It's, you know, vanilla JavaScript in some way, but that would mean that there could be utilities for individual frameworks, a, a React utility, a Svelte utility, um, that use that to source data from Drupal, and you know that's kind of a solved problem. So that uh, at that point you can work on the React specific things, a, a library of React hooks, for example. And then uh, there are what are referred to the meta framework, so things like Next and Gatsby and SvelteKit. So um, you know Next and Gatsby, for example, they're both React projects, 
but they have their own different conventions and uh, approaches and individual utilities. So if there was essentially a, you know, a library that had uh, common React hooks or common uh, functionality for React projects that source data from Drupal, um, there could be another utility that just has the things that are specific to Gatsby and so on. And then at the highest level is like the idea of some kind of starter kit or you, know, you could even think of just as a actual decoupled Drupal project. And that really is the, the piece that is unique and is picking and choosing from these utilities as necessary, adding their own uh, secret sauce, that sort of stuff. But um, I do feel like there's just a lot of uh, either framework specific things that are being solved over and over or just even cases where there are a lot of these Drupal JavaScript pro projects that are doing things in almost kind of the same way. So, uh, yeah, you know, another kind of uh, thing I'm trying to figure out is, okay, given, <laughs> given all those opinions, uh, what could we do to move forward? Um, so there are a, a couple of options uh, there. So one is that, you know, I think that we could start trying to do more to promote uh, popular projects to the Drupal namespace that the community seems to be using. The one that um, you know first pops to mind for me is that um, uh, uh, what was it? Drupal JSON API params uh, utility on NPM. Um, uh, I think Drux uses it. Uh, Drupal State is using it. it. You know, gets a de decent amount of downloads on NPM. It's a nice uh, common utility. And I feel like if there was a path for projects like that to uh, wind up under the Drupal namespace, that could be one way to approach, th approach this problem. Um, alternatively, you know, there could be uh, an effort, an initiative, uh, who knows, to plan and build SDK-like utilities in some form that are, that are you know, under the official Drupal namespace, you know, an actual effort to do that. Um, and then also uh, within the decoupled menus initiative uh, currently, uh, there's been some documentation efforts that have gone on in the past and we are trying to move that forward, both closing out uh, what is specific to decoupled menus, but also trying to take some of that work uh, and head in the direction of a, a home for decoupled documentation for Drupal in general. So uh, I am uh, not completely clear on <laughs> what the path forward is there and trying to figure that out. Um, so tomorrow during uh, Contribution Day, I'll, I'll be kicking around, um, and I'd love to talk more about all of these problems. If you're interested, um, if you're interested in Drupal State, there are a number of issues on the issue queue, so I, I'd love to uh, to chat. And if you want to get involved, that would be amazing. And also in general, I, I want to you know try to uh, ideally in time for DrupalCon have uh, a little bit more of kind of an actual uh, actionable path forward. For some of these problems, like what what are the the next steps beyond uh, menus, for example, that we can have um, some particular efforts in uh, the Drupal community to try to solve. So, got to get my ducks in a row there. And uh, that's that. I know that we are. Uh, I'm in between you and tacos. Um, but if there are any uh, any questions or anything, happy to. Uh, yeah, Matt. So, as somebody who built their own SDK and did a lot of silly things that Jason has done. Um, I want to commend you for trying to get that together, and I think that would be the best path forward is like that. That's entirely, you wrote a JS SDK for a JSON API site. So, hey, um, from Chef Creek, the, the next one, like, let's find all the shared components and turn that into utilities, and that's, so kudos, because that felt very hard before. Awesome. Yeah, uh, uh, yes. Maybe there could be like a like an additional namespace, like a Drupal dash contrib namespace, where like you know anyone could add their project to. Yeah, and then, I, it, and then it wouldn't need to be perfect because everything that goes into like core needs to. You know. Yep. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Some variation on that, uh, I could see that uh, being useful. Uh, yeah, I'm of two minds about that. I think that more things that are. Uh, under something officially Drupal namespaced in some way would be good. Uh, I also worry about 
that also opening the floodgates to a similar problem where, it, you know, the curation part of that I think is important, but yeah, that's a good point. Any I other? Inventory modules is an issue currently, so. Yeah, yep. And yeah, another thing uh, related to this, uh, if people uh, don't know, so recently uh, there is a new project type under Drupal.org, a general project. And the, the difference with general projects is that they don't assume that it's a PHP project. So that allows us to, uh, on Drupal.org, do things like create node packages and, and things like that. So um, with that opening up projects on Drupal.org, yeah, we're tr we need to figure out exactly how we can manage that on NPM. So. Cool, any other questions or anything? Yes? Um, this sounds awesome. How, how big is uh, is this is your you know it's like a database abstraction layer with a JavaScript to get content from Google, but it's so like how 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 complete is your project? Yeah, so uh, I would say the biggest issue with it right now is just people using it, uh -huh. and uh, you know uh, getting people's experience, getting bugs. I, I mean, it is it is baked in that is it you know it's a thing you can install on npm and use. Um, and we're continuing to work on it. Uh, a, a lot of what I've been focusing on at Pantheon are uh, you know, tools, utilities, reference implementations for uh, people who are going to host decoupled sites on Pantheon. So it's something that we're, we're going to continue to invest in, uh, but also I'm hoping that there is interest and investment outside of just Pantheon as well. So. Yes? So is... Uh is Pantheon sponsored, like, uh, maybe I missed the beginning, I'm sorry if I did. Are you, is Pantheon sponsoring your time on this? Yes. 100%? Yeah, uh, well, so, I mean, I uh, have been working on this and, and other, you know, decoupled re related projects uh, as my day job. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, which is, uh, which is awesome. I, you know, like I said, I really uh, appreciate uh, their investment in my time on this stuff. Sorry if I missed that. No, that's okay. Well, thanks, everybody. Hope that was interesting. Uh, happy to talk more later. Thank you. And man, was it fun to do this in real life. I know. Tacos. <laughs>